I would invite you to turn to page 5 in your bulletin for the sixth petition and the explanation. What is the sixth petition? And lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God has so We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. In the name of Jesus, Amen. One of you will betray me. These are Jesus' words. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe that they would give in to such a temptation. They didn't believe that they were capable of such complete and utter betrayal. How could they? For three years they had followed him, given up their livelihood, wandered around the countryside with him, watched him do amazing things, heal the sick, even raise the dead. Betray him? Surely not one of that. Surely not. But it was so. The forces of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature were too much for them. Not just for Judas. In the end, they all forsook him and fled. Each one, like sheep, went his own way. Judas betrayed him with a kiss. Simon Peter betrayed him with words of denial. And they all betrayed him with their feet by fleeing just when he needed them most. We pray in the sixth petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature <coughs> May not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. For some, they put their trust in the Jewish leadership, that it would get sorted out right in the end, and they could make a little coin along the way. For some, they gave in to despair, could not believe that God would forgive such sins as these. Judas finally went and hanged himself for his foul deeds. It's hard to imagine any worse shame and device than fleeing when the very Son of God needs you most. For so many, fear kept them from confessing who he is. But you are no better. Far from it. Your betrayals are just as bad or worse. You know better. And yet you continue to sin, to betray our Lord by word and deed, by neglect, by putting faith in yourself above the God who comes in his flesh and blood. Repent of your sin, for they are legion. Repent. Christ our Lord, this night, delivers something to you to guard and keep you from temptation. We pray that God would guard and keep us, and so he does. He guards you and keeps you with his very flesh and blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The flesh and blood of Jesus is the very same flesh and blood that was betrayed for you. And make no mistake, he did not give in to temptation. Not at the beginning, to temptation in the wilderness, and all the way to the very end. His faithfulness knows no bounds. Even in his cry of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
even in those words, he calls out, my God. He does not deny or confesses who he is to the very end. And it is that body and blood that you receive this night. You cannot keep yourself from temptation. You are poor and weak, hungry, in need far beyond what you are able to do for yourself. Do you remember those words we heard from St. Paul a few moments ago? Hear them again. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is no mere symbol or word picture. By receiving his body and blood this night, we participate in the body and blood of Christ. So it is that you are receiving his dead and resurrected body for the forgiveness of sins, for life, for salvation. We all partake of one loaf, one bread. Are you still tempted? Yes. You are tempted, attacked by these things, as the Catechism puts it. False belief, despair, other great shame and vice are never far away from the Christian. For Satan loves to attack us wherever we are weakest. You, beloved, you have received the medicine. You have received Christ, and in him you are free. So come this night. Come and see how Christ our Lord overcomes all temptation and wins the victory for you. Come and receive him who is life himself for you. He will be victorious. You will win the victory forever in him by his death and resurrection. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting.